And next we have The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two, written by Lars M. This is the sequel to the Wayward Bard series from the same author. Here is the author's, uh, actually, it's oh, sorry, 412 pages, $4.99, available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Daniel's updated guide to early retirement, version 2.0. One, intercept illegal money transfer from mafia bosses. Complete success, except for the part where I was discovered and almost caught. Two, hide out in super exclusive full immersion virtual reality game until the heat is off. Doing fine so far, may have figured out that I'm in game. Still, it's a huge game, so no problem, right? Three, roll a bard, max out charisma, live it up. Uh, two out of three ain't bad. We're just postponing the live it up part of it. Four, profit. Still almost two years to go for that. Um, think happy thoughts. There you go. And uh, he could have been way worse off. Sure, Daniel was stuck in a game as a local bard from a quaint village, but people were nice. The quests juicy and the lore intriguing. Even so, with the mob on the lookout, Daniel will soon find himself sorely tested to avoid detection. Disclaimer, still no harems in the series, even with the Bard MC. Go figure. We're doing light on the cursing and less light on the puns. You were warned. So there you go. That's the author's description. Uh, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um... Really short, easy review on this one. Um, this is the sequel to the popular Wave of the Bard series uh, novel, um, and it does not disappoint. The lovable, snarky Bard is back for more adventures, more fun, uh, more fun stories, and this was generally hard to put down. Um, there is good world building here, good character building, and I think one of the things I really appreciate about the story is that um, the author definitely leans hard into what his idea of, of a bard should be. In this case, it's more of a historical um, collection bard um, with like some, definitely some good buffs and some good magical abilities and some combat as as a almost secondary role. Um, but I really appreciated the way the author did role building, did character building for the characters by collecting their particular stories. It was a really nice way of just like learning small little snippets of the world um, on a very natural way, because that that definitely feels like something that a good bard would do in collecting stories and then making songs out of them and using that information to, you know, um, explore the, the quests and explore the world and, you know, um, and advance things like that. Uh, but it all starts off with just being a good conversationalist. And that was definitely a big part of what the story is, is appeal is like there's some really good rubbling from just talking to NPC characters. Uh, and it was really enjoyable. Um New to the story is, again, uh, some new aspect of it. Pet raising, class training. There's a bit of tournament fighting here. Um, the things that I've really enjoyed about the, about the first story are still here. Smart playing, stats that matter. That's really one of the big things that I think is a draw for me, at least, in that the main character has deficits in stats, and it actually is reflective in the story. He's not, he doesn't have great strength there, like dexterity stats, um, which means he's not great in straightforward combat. And that's something he has to overcome and train about. And even with training, he's never going to be a good fighter. Um, but he has, he maximizes the good stats and his good abilities, which is like a maxed out charisma stat. And uh, which, which leads into like a small casting. And so the fact that the stats actually have an impact, like a visible written consistent impact is, is really, um, you know, nice for me at least. Cause I'm one of those people like, Oh, if the stats don't really like reflect, um, in the story, it lessens my enjoyment because that means those numbers don't really matter. Uh, there's also lots of training in the story, um, songs galore, which is fun for a lot of people, um, and really just interesting quests. Uh, again, the novel is a little slice of life, and the main character just kind of does some stuff, has some goals, but it's really good stuff. I think the action is turned up a little bit in this one compared to book one a little bit. Um, but again, it's, I think the, the big draw is the main character. He's, he's really likable. He's really snarky. It's fun, bantery, um, good puns. Um, and he gets to explore some other areas besides the starter quest, the starter village. Um, and so you get some, get to expand your real world a little bit and that's enjoyable. And I think I, I enjoyed Every moment of it, had a good time with it, gets score 7.6 out of 10 for me. That's The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two. And again, when I think of like a really good, like a little bit of art story, this is always the series that I recommend and the series that comes to mind. So enjoyable. Again, with the score 7.6 out of 10 for The Fallen Bard, World of Chains, book number two.